I get a lot of pushback on this because it makes I'm people sure. very uncomfortable. And as you say, and and to me, that reveals their discomfort with disability more than anything else. Jesus's resurrected body is disabled. He says to Thomas, put your hand in my side, touch my scars, see them. Blessed are you who have seen, but blessed are those what? who have not seen and believe. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I have to just show you guys. I, I have a scar on my chin right here. See it? There's a scar on my chin from when I, I was swinging on the tables at Burger King when I was a little kid and swung too far and went down on my chin. I have a scar right there where it got busted open. So I guess I'm disabled now. I guess I can claim disability according to, to, to Amy Kenny because scars are disabilities. Now, of course, what's, what's the natural extension of this idea if scars are disabilities? When, and what is a scar? Well, a scar is evidence you've been injured and then healed, right? Scars, scars are, in, in, in the case of Christ, the scars in his side and his hands are evidence that he physically was crucified on the cross, that he actually died and then was resurrected. <laughs> That's what his scars are evidence of, right? But according to Amy Kenny, his scars are a disability. He's disabled because of his scars. Um, the natural extension of this thought process, of course, is that anybody who goes through something bad, something bad happens that they're healed of, um, can perpetually claim a special victim status. Where have we heard this before? Well, this is the church two movement. This is victimology. This is, um, intersectionality. This is extra points on your intersectionality score. This is standpoint theory. This is the idea that, that there are certain classes that are um, separated from others that are more valuable than others based off of their disability status based or, or their skin color or their race or whatever. There's, there isn't one human race that's divided by um, being in or out of the kingdom, being the race of Adam or the race of Christ. That's not the division. It's, it's based off of all of these other things where you can claim special special status and a special perspective from which to understand the truth. And as disabled people, we know that all too well. People touching us without our consent, people poking and prodding us, really? people wanting to <laughs> examine our bodies for proof what? and not believing and gaslighting when... W wait, what? I'm sorry. It, like, have I missed... Ha have any of you... I mean, honestly, leave it in the comments here. Like on, on Patreon, I realize this is in the Patreon portion. I might have to take this little clip and throw it out on YouTube to try to figure out what is going on here. Leave in the comments here if you've ever been um, witness to somebody saying, I don't think you're really disabled. I don't think those crutches are real. I think you're just in a wheelchair to get attention. Hey, have, have any of you ever seen this? Like ever? This is a bizarre, bizarre claim. People poking and prodding at us. Like, are you really disabled? Are you sure? Let me let me see. Let me lift up your legs. Let me let me you know, poke you with this knife and see if you can feel that. What? I've never heard of this in my in my in my entire life. And I and I know I have I have friends who are disabled. Never heard of this. A story is told as it is here with the women sharing that they have seen the resurrected Christ and Thomas saying, Nope. And this I think it's also really important because we say that we believe that Jesus has defeated the dominions of darkness and defeated death itself and that death has no sting, but it was a whoopsie that he came back disabled. What? <laughs> what? It, Jesus defeated death itself. This, this is salvation. Death has no sting is a statement about salvation. It means you have eternal life. It's not, it's not rocket science. You know, the gospel is an amazing, true, but straightforward message. There's, there's nothing to read between the lines. It's not like, well, Jesus decided that, that he was going to still have scars on his hands and on his sides because he really wanted to, to, to fly the disabled flag and make sure that disabled people knew that they could also be saved. This, this doesn't make any sense at all. And yet this is what passes for serious theological thought in, in woke circles. 
I mean, that doesn't make sense. So it doesn't I make think sense. that what we are uncomfortable with is the idea that the risen Christ would choose a disabled form. Wait, we're uncomfortable with it because it's stupid. We're uncomfortable with it because the text doesn't support that. Because the actual answer is so much more related to the gospel than whatever it is you're trying to spin here. I mean, again, the reason why there were scars, the reason why Jesus had scars is because he physically died. He actually died and was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. His physical body, his incarnate body died on the cross. He suffered in real life. It really happened to his actual human body. And he, as he is raised from the dead by the power of the Spirit, it's the same body. This is not that. This is not that complicated. This isn't some sort of read between the lines um, virtue signal about disabled people. I, I I'm waiting for Justin Peters to get a hold of this and really uh, you know set this uh, this Dr. Amy Kenny straight because this is nonsensical. And what that reveals to me is oh. that it gives me the freedom and hopefully it liberates us all huh? because it makes me realize yet again that my redemption and the mocks of my healing are not things to be hidden or erased or eradicated. My huh? disability isn't something to be ashamed of because it emulates the risen <laughs> Christ. <laughs> this is so stupid. I mean, but, but they will continue to throw this kind of nonsensical stuff out there because they have a worldview that needs to be supported by intersectionality. They have a worldview that says, divide people up. The gospel isn't enough. The gospel isn't unifying. Everybody's got to have their own little clan and their own little, their, their, their own little special version of the gospel for them. This is postmodernism. This is, um, intersectionality. This is, uh, you know, the, the Christian version of class warfare. I mean, she said it herself. Well, this is the way this makes me feel though. So, you know, this is, this is why it's important to me and my feelings. This is why. And that disabled body is the mock of all of our healing. That's insane. I mean, and the funny thing is they're offering this, like this is some sort of a deep intellectual thought, like, wow. I can't believe we've never thought of this before, that Jesus was really making a statement about disabled people and how um, just like Jesus chose to come back disabled to show the scars of, of his healing, um, you should also not try to hide, uh, I guess, your scars before you came to Christ, before you were healed, before you were regenerated. Never mind that the Bible teaches that you're a new creation, that you're washed white as snow. That your sin was is placed as far from you as the east is from the west. But forget about that. No, no. Keep bearing. Keep bearing the uh, the the signs of your lostness. You know, opening the door for anybody to uh, continue to to carry around the cross of their sin rather than the cross of Christ.